Parker is the world premier supplier of inerting systems technology, and we have more product and more aircraft that we're providing inerting technology to than any other competitor in the world. The system itself started out as a technology associated with uh, fuel tank inerting of military airplanes. And this technology was applied to the fuel tanks to protect the fuel tanks from being exploded under a combat ignition round. Unfortunately, our opportunity is, is a byproduct of the TWA 800 uh, disaster. With the NTSB and the FAA investigating, they looked at that technology and our technology and said, can we apply this to the commercial industry? And we worked with them very closely and uh, defined and developed a system that would work for commercial airplanes. Boeing approached Parker because of our uh, knowledge of OBIGS, which is uh, an acronym for Onboard Inert Gas Generating System. The system works in the following way. We use an air separation module, such as this unit here, and it would fit into canisters of different sizes. And the separator separates natural air which has mostly nitrogen and oxygen into the two component parts. The nitrogen we put into the fuel tank and it protects it by making it an inert atmosphere. Ultimately, what it's trying to do is protect the fuel tanks from exploding. The inerting system is made up of a number of different parts. Some of those parts come from our division where we make valves and pieces of equipment, but we also use a number of parts from other divisions. For example, Parker Filtration Systems, PFS, in the Netherlands. They're providing the separation uh, fibers that do the oxygen and nitrogen separation. The key technology of the inerting system is the fibers. So they actually take this hollow fiber, when they manufacture it, they spin it, and they spin it into these tubes. And uh, then they epoxy it. As you can see here, this is epoxy. And then they trim the face off to expose the open pores of the fiber. Most of the aircraft we work on, it's about a three to five year development cycle. And so during that period, what we do is we'll sit down with the OEM, whether it be Airbus, Boeing, or other customers, and we'll try to optimize the system to their needs. We have on-site engineers in Seattle for Boeing, Texas for Lockheed, and in Europe for Sukhoi in Russia, and Airbus in Spain, Germany, and England. If we start at the very beginning of the process and help them engineer their solution together with our products. This is the Air and Fuel Division's test facility for all of our major product lines. And we have three main product lines, the first being uh, fuel equipment and fuel systems. We have the inerting uh, systems and products, and we also have engine and airframe products. This is really world class, and we are the leaders in the inerting marketplace. You won't find this set up anywhere in the world Our first major contract with Airbus out of Air and Fuel Division is to have an inerting system on the single aisle and long range platforms. Now as a result of that initial work, we've now been awarded the A350, which is their next new airplane. So by having this unique technology and being the world leader in that technology, has also led to and help us be awarded the fuel pumps, the fuel management, and the balance of the fuel system. This year we'll deliver about 400 systems primarily 737, which com comprises about, say, uh, 3,000 components. By 2010, Airbus will enter production on the A320, 330, 340, which is going to double the volume. Another thing that we're real excited about in this product line that's going to drive a lot of the growth is also the aftermarket. And this product needs a replacement every seven to nine years, and so that's going to give us growth beyond the traditional aircraft cycles. The WIND strategy significantly supports our strategy here with inerting technology and it's a perfect example where we've taken an innovative product to the market, we've created systems opportunity and we're growing it at a profitable rate.